Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of Three Minutes to Midnight. My name is Lori Alexander, and I'm joined by my co-host, Robbie D. Hey, Rob. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. It's been ages since we spoke. I know. It's been, what, an hour? An hour, at least. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we've had a, we've had quite a, co- a an eventful couple days here on the show, and uh you know, but that's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We can have we can have a, a, a pleasant break from all these false flags and whatnot. Uh, any day now, you know. I'm, any day, day. I'm looking forward to the day. I know. Someday. We um we have a special guest with us tonight, as we've been telling everybody for uh, the last few days. Um, we have with us a pioneer in the revelation of the best kept secret in human history. The fact that we live on a flat earth plane and not a helio uh, centric globe model that we've been indoctrinated into believing our entire lives. Um, the flat earth model is a belief that the earth's shape is a plane or disc. Many ancient cultures have uh, had conceptions of a flat earth, including Greece. It was also typically held in the aboriginal cultures of the Americas. And they believed that the earth, the flat earth, was domed by a firmament in the shape of an inverted bowl. And we have actual scripture to back this up. This gentleman um, was producer and narrator of the documentary Under the Dome. Please welcome Mark Sargent. Hello, Mr. Sargent. Hey, guys. How is everyone doing this fine holiday week? (laughs) (laughs) Doing great. (laughs) Never a dull moment. We're doing fantastic. I want to thank you for joining us and for coming on and talking with our viewers. We, um, this, like I said before we went on the air, this topic is... um, quite uh, an emotion stir. And I want to remind everybody in the chat room, we do have the chat room open for everybody. Your questions, your comments are welcome, but please, we ask that you leave the emotions out of this, okay? Can- we want you to have a, a pleasant uh, experience in the chat room. Go ahead and um, type, your, type your questions in. I'm going to try to write them down as I'm talking, but I can't do two things at once. I do know that we've got Scott in the room. Um, if Scott could maybe, I didn't even talk with him about this before we started. If he could maybe write down some questions and then maybe um, send them to me over by Facebook, that would be great. Um, we want to make sure that uh, you know we, we answer your questions because this is a topic that is on everybody's mind. I know social media um, yeah. Talks about it all the time, right, Mr. Sargent? Oh, yeah, yeah. And and I've got to preface this with, because, you know, you said, oh, everyone should be nice. Because it is, and I've been doing this now since February of last year, which is, it is the most polarizing topic I've ever seen. And I don't care what conspiracy anyone in the audience is, is used to. You know, if you're into JFK or Pearl Harbor, or Boston bombing or Sandy Hook or aliens or Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster, it doesn't really matter. This is the only conspiracy I have seen which raises emotions to a completely new level. So when people are in the chat room and they're getting all worked up, you got to ask yourself, why are you getting all worked up exactly? <laughs> because this thing should be, it, it, for me, it was the last book on the shelf. It was the movie I never wanted to watch. And even I, the first time, and I'm not kidding you when I when when I said this on another show, the first time I clicked on a flat Earth video, I got physically flushed. You know, I was embarrassed to click on it, and I was thinking, how is this even possible? You know, I've I've watched stuff about how the all the royalty you know, members of Parliament are supposedly lizard people, and I had, you know I I had no problem with with that, and I had a problem with this, and it's because it's the only conspiracy from what I've been told anyway, that you can't run away from. You know, there's all sorts of conspiracies out there that can be hidden in the desert. They can be buried to where no one ever thinks about them again. But with this, it's very much the Matrix scenario where, like Neo, when he was told about the Matrix, he just started swinging. So keep that in mind. Anyone that's out there listening to this, you know, just don't lose it right away. I know some of you are going to anyway. It's like, this is stupid. You're insulting the program by even talking about it. It's like, <laughs> I agree. I, I totally agree. I honestly thought when I made Flat Earth Clues that this thing was going to get shot down in the first couple of weeks. Some scientist was going to come out and say, okay, you forgot to do this sort of math, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And you can, you can stop talking about it. And I, but that never happened. In fact, the opposite started happening where subject matter experts from just about every profession you can think of, with, with the exception of astrophysicists and astronomers and uh, geodetic surveyors, 
the, everybody else came out and said, you know what, you may be onto something. Uh, and oh, by, by the way, one more thing, Lori, uh, before I really get into this, was you mentioned that I was the producer of the Under the Dome documentary, which which you watched. Did you know, or maybe you did or maybe you didn't, that Under the Dome, I didn't even, that's not even my channel. That was just some guy that took my videos and mashed them up and put them on his channel. Wow. No, did not, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. But no. here's the thing is, you know, you're talking about emotion and stuff. And, and I, I told you that I, that was the first thing. I, I, I was, I was the epitome. And I, I, I don't know if this person is watching my channel right now, but I owe uh, Stinky Dog I think it's the, um, the channel. I owe him a big apology publicly because um, a year ago, him and I were friends and this came between us. And I, I didn't, the, the cognitive dissonance on this topic was so deep for me that I just couldn't, couldn't put, my, put my brain around it. No. And that is when I was so angry with him that I set out to debunk this. And I stumbled on your documentary and I haven't looked back. And I just, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if he's watching this. I know he does lurk around YouTube. Um, if he is watching, I just want to publicly apologize for how I treated him a year ago on this topic. I'm totally on board now. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then I, and then I came along and then gave you a nudge in the right direction. <laughs> and Robbie came along and yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, because I mean, like, just like with, with Mark, I mean, when I first saw the flat earth, when I uh, woke up a, uh, a few years ago, I looked at it the same and I laughed at it and I'm like, nah, and I put it away. But it was like six, about six months later, I just, I, for some reason, I was being drawn back into it mm -hmm. and, I, yeah. and, and then it was about eight months worth of research and then you know it was the conclusion the, well we live we, we, could, we could very well live in a realm yeah yeah the the t-shirt that's eventually going to come out when this thing does is that it'll go something like this i became a flat earther because i tried to debunk flat earth Mm -hmm. And nobody, nobody starts out with thinking this is the greatest idea ever, including me. You know, I, I looked at this thing and was literally banging my head on the keyboard some days because there was no way. Again, the, the cognitive dissonance where I was going, there's, it, there's no way this could be real. I'm fully versed on just about every conspiracy you can think of. There's no way this could have gotten past me. It's like a street magic trick that everybody fell for. So when it finally did hit me, you know, when I finally came around, I was like, oh, man. And, and that's, that's how I run it. Some people can get it in a few days. Some people, it takes some weeks. It took me months, but I had less material to work with. So, um, yeah. oh, and, and by the way, the, um, the under the dome documentary, that's just one of the mirrors because when I first put this out there, I also made a creative commons license on YouTube. So anybody want the original videos were called flat earth clues on my oh. YouTube channel, uh, Mark K. Sargent, and I made a Creative Commons license, so if anyone wanted to take it, and still can, you know, and take it and make money with it, go ahead. And people started taking them and, and putting them under different titles. So that one guy, he made Under the Dome full documentary. I think that's pushing two million hits now. And then another guy made one, and he did a variation on one of my clue names, which was called um, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And wow. he got, uh, he, that thing's over two million hits right now. And so that got me a lot more exposure than I, than, but yeah, there's some people out there don't, don't even know I actually have a YouTube channel. They've just based all their stuff off that one, you know, the, the one video mashup of the clues one through, I think 11 at the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway. What, what got you looking into this? I mean, what, where, how did your journey start into boredom? This? Sheer what? boredom. Uh, it was a conspiracy boredom, not not just boredom with life or anything. I had looked at enough conspiracies over the last 20 years that I, I thought I had seen it all. And everybody, everybody in conspiracy world uh, knows what what you know what, about flat Earth. Everybody's heard of it, but no one gives it any any credibility. Why would you? It's stupid. It's ridiculous. And I just happened to click on a video that was done by a German guy. And I don't think it was Cesar. I think it was somebody else. And he was talking about it. It was all in German with subtitles. But he was talking about how the flights in the southern hemisphere don't make any sense. And that they're all screwed up. All the, all the, uh, the connections are really screwed up. And the they only way they can make sense is if the Earth wasn't actually a globe, but if it was a flat disk. And I was going, okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, he... he Got my curiosity up, and then I found uh, Matt Boylan's video, 
which was uh, the only, I still considered his finest work, which was a video where his girlfriend up in Montreal at the time sat him down sober. Note I said sober because a lot of the time he's not. <laughs> and he talked about how he worked for NASA and as a as a, a contract painter for different things and not that that has anything to do with flat earth necessarily but he was talking about how he went to the hamptons during like a holiday christmas party because he was a you know when he was in his 20s he was a, a quite a dynamic guy he could paint he could act he could do comedy he was did a lot of things and i've told this story so many times i could probably tell it better than he can where he was at this party and there was a power outage and it was down to wine and candles and everyone was kind of talking about stuff and somebody was talking about because everyone there were high level nasa people there and they were, they were talking about oh yeah the, the people had were in charge of different teams and one was saying oh yeah the gps heard a rumor that gps doesn't work down in antarctica another guy says well hey fred you might want to send a, one of your teams out there and confirm this and when um it, when, but another guy chimes in a guy even higher up and he goes well if you send out your guys that far they're not coming back and Matt, you know, Matt drinking wine goes, well, why wouldn't they come back? And because, well, GPS doesn't work down there. And Matt, you know, okay, why doesn't GPS work down there? Because it's flat. And then he proceeds to take a piece of chalk and draw on the cement floor, you know, tile floor, draw out what, how the earth works and how the world really looks. And including all the thermal dynamics and how the energy is processed. And by the time he was done it looked like the UN flag. And that story, which I think is still good enough for a sci-fi movie of the week, you know, it's definitely a Twilight Zone type of episode plot line. I was going, wow, that is some interesting stuff. And, and then I kind of said, okay, you know what? I'm going to disprove this. I'm going to debunk this because it's a good story, but you know, it's easily disproven. And that's when I looked into everything on the space program side, specifically NASA. And as I was digging into more and more NASA stuff, the more I looked at it, the uh, the thinner it got. You know, kind of like you're, you're looking at a stack of cardboard boxes and you're going, wow, there's obviously a whole bunch of stuff in there. And by the mm -hmm. time I was done, I realized there was almost nothing in those boxes at all. You know, not barely even any packing popcorn. And then, you know, then I started down the rabbit hole of, okay, where where is the evidence? How did I know? When did I know it was a globe? And then when did everybody else know it was a globe? And by the time I was done, I had built, I had started building the clues, the flat earth clues, which put, I treated it like a court case where I said, we, you know, if you go into the court courtroom and you've got the, the globe model on one side and everybody else on the other, I started because a lot of people say, well, you can't, you have no proof there's a flat earth. I was going, well, I may not have physical, you know, pictures of the flat earth, but I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that by the time you're done looking at flat or, you know, the whole flat earth concept, you, you're no doubt in your mind, you're going to say, oh yeah, it's absolutely not a globe. Now you may not know exactly what shape it is, but you'll know without any doubt that it's not a globe. And then, you know, then it's the whole O.J. Simpson thing. You know, if the gloves don't fit, you must have quit. So, there you go. Exactly. Now, um, as, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> let's, let's go back to the beginnings of this. Okay, so yeah. you, you yeah. researched it and you found, did you find the exact moment when it switched? Because the flat earth theory is nothing new. Mm -hmm. This has been, this was, uh, the, the flat earth, the, the, we, we knew the earth was flat up until about, what, 500 years ago? Yep, yep. 500 years ago. Okay, so, you know, at what point did it change from a, a flat earth model to a, uh, a globe? For me, it was, I know exactly the moment that it happens, and I've said this on many things, which was, it was February 10th, 2015, I had about 3.30 in the morning where I had, this thing had been rattling around in my head for months. I first had looked at it in the summer of 2014 and, you know, was chewing on it. It was chewing on it. And then finally that morning of February 10th, I, it, the, the balance of power had shifted to where I woke up and I said, it's, it's, honestly, the narrative was in my head. And some people say, oh, you were, you've been touched. It was divine intervention. I was going, yeah, maybe, I suppose. But the narrative was in my head 
to where I got up immediately and as I was taking the shower I could hear the first clue the words in my own voice in my head and I just sat down and started typing them but it was the the shift the the paradigm shift was that I no longer believed I believed in the flat earth argument more than I did the globe argument to the point where now it's like is not just personally for me but I said you know what I think I could actually tell people this and I think I've got to, I think I could convince people that this could this is a real real thing because it's one thing to believe you know believe something but to, to create an argument that you could put out there on the internet and you've got enough confidence in it that that you're you're willing to stand by it and, and take the take the lumps that's where what it what it came down for me it was kind of like the um if you guys have ever taken a test in high school or college where you're pretty sure that you aced it but you're not completely positive. So as you're, you're ready to hand it in, but there's something holding you back, you're going, oh man, you know, I'm pretty, you know, I, 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 that's where I was. And so when I you know, put that first clue out there, the introduction, uh, and then the, the clue is following this, I honestly thought that, I mean, I was 99% sure that I was onto something, but I still needed vindication from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And then it just started coming in waves, just uh, extreme, everything just started snowballing so fast. And now, you know, as you guys know, the community is, is massive, even probably even more so than it is publicly, you know, so because well, how many flat earthers do you think there are out there? And now I was going, well, man, if it's not, if it's not in the millions, it's very least in the hundreds of thousands, because there's lots for every person that's, that's made YouTube videos or done a web page or, you know, started up a forum. How many people you know wanted to but couldn't, and then how many people just don't have the skill set, and then how many people just don't are just afraid because they, they don't want to be ostracized by their community, and the degrees of separation I think we're already there where I've already got stories and I won't necessarily go into them right now where people are running into others which know about it and all you need is a common you know somebody brings it up it's like oh right you know you know like you'll be in a group of, of 12 15 people and two of them already know about this and which means there's a lot of people out there that that already know about flat earth anyway sorry i'm going on on a no, rant, no, so. no, no, well it, it just seems to be expanding and, and what i've noticed is that the actual quality of the videos and the discussions that are on YouTube now seem to be a lot better than what they were at the beginning from yes. when when you started. Um, may I ask, um, was um, any of your research into NASA a, 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 a contributory factor to sealing the deal for you? Yeah, it was. And it's tough for me. And, and I don't know where, where are you, I imagine you're located over in Britain somewhere. In the UK. Yeah. yeah, I'm in the UK. Yes. It's it's tougher for Americans to jump on this it, it, from the NASA side. In fact, there's three talk show hosts that I know of, uh, one of which I was interviewed, which absolutely believe in all sorts of conspiracies. But they also believe that NASA is honest as a day is long and has never done anything wrong. Um, people in the United States, it, it's almost a national pastime, you know, you, you baseball, apple pie and the space program, you know, you, you take pride in that, you know, rah, rah, wave the flag. But when I looked into NASA, the more I looked into them, yeah, they, they absolutely were part of the, the, the ceiling of the deal because there was so, there's so many things that should be there that aren't, that we take for granted. And that's the, that. I will give them credit on that side where NASA has created illusions that we have taken as fact. For example, uh, the, the most obvious ones that will come up would be the, the lack of photographs, where most Americans don't know that from 1972 up until the summer of last year, there was only one full sunlit picture of the Earth ever taken, ever um, there's ne there's still no picture of the Earth rotating on its axis in space where the weather is morphing. Uh, it, it, they, they can do one or the other. So I've seen, and though and those only came out uh, recently, uh, uh, you know, last summer, as coincidentally, uh, there is no picture uh, or there's no video of any astronaut from any mission from Mercury all the way up to the ISS where they're outside of their spacecraft and they're panning 180 degrees or or more with the camera running 
that, that it, it never ever happens. Uh, there's no video of any rocket from any sp space program, unedited, you know, continuous video, where uh, the vehicle is leaving or returning from Earth orbit, from any space program. Uh, we don't even have any movies from astronauts inside an airlock where they open up the airlock and they leave. I mean, we, GoPro 4K cameras are cheap. You know, you can get those with a bowl of soup nowadays. And nobody's we're putting these cameras on anything. They're going way out of their, uh, out of the lines to not show us stuff. Uh, the, the panning thing, which again, I won't take credit for all this information. This is all found out by other people in the community. Uh, the first one, uh, the panning the astronaut thing was by Max Malone, and that was a brilliant one. That should have happened by accident. And that is, no astronaut outside of a spacecraft has ever done a, a 360 or a 180. He's never turned around with the camera running. How is that even possible? By accident, that should have happened by accident. Uh, all these things from NASA, uh, and combined with a couple other gems, which I love so much, which I'm still waiting to, to beat the, uh, uh, scientists over the head with. But the first would be the Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA in 1959. Wait, 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 Mr. Sergeant, hold on a second. Sorry. Now, they, 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 did, they did address that. They said because they didn't know about it, it wasn't a problem. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Van Allen himself came out and said, oh, yeah, you can get past it if you go real fast. <laughs> really? That's your argument? You, you mean all you have to do is gun it and you can get past all that radiation? Bunch of crap. And even he should have known by, better because the fastest speed, if you believe mainstream science, that we can go up there is about, what, 17,000 miles an hour? And if the belts are running 60,000 miles thick in some cases, then, yeah. you know, that's, that's several hours in each direction. Remember, it's a round trip for, for Apollo astronauts to go there and back, but... And yet nobody died from radiation poisoning. Nobody got radiation sickness. Nobody even got cancer. And yet, well, it's not even to mention. I mean, if you look at the actual uh, spacecraft that they supposedly were in, I mean, it's it's made up of tin foil and and you know, um, dental oh, curtain rods. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's you it's awful. Awful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I, I think that was the one thing that they did that really shot themselves in the foot, which was the uh, having Van Allen announce that because they, they didn't know much about radiation back in the day. And we know now, you know, there's two common metals you can use to protect yourself from radiation. One is lead. We wear those in the dentist's office, you know, those, those heavy, uh, heavy lead blankets. And the other is gold, which is twice as dense as lead. And you have to use one of those two methods basically to, to line your shield your, to line your craft with and they they never they won't even address it we'll not talk about it and it's amazing so, and so now people are saying well you know they went out through the hole the donut hole of the ozone belt you know that that's how they get it it's like really because if they did that then why is the orion project also known as the mars program why are they so concerned about the radiation belts? And you probably know this already. If you want to have fun, for anyone that wants to debunk this, go out to the um, any search engine and type in Orion Trial by Fire, and it'll take you straight to the NASA webpage, you know, nasa.gov, and you'll see a nice little eight-minute movie they made for television where they're talking about the Orion. It's, a, it's basically an Orion promo piece. And they're very specific about the Van Allen radiation belts and how they're only going to send unmanned probes through these belts because they can't figure out how to get through the, the radiation and this was done in october this movie was done in october of 2014 i'm going what are you, what are you talking about you, you got through it in the 60s not only did you get through it you got through it with flying colors so well as a matter of fact that i don't think you'd ever ever change anything about the capsule and they're really really big into it's it's amazing the movie is still up there it's so blatant i don't know who allowed it but it is an official NASA video and it drives me nuts. Anyway, sorry, that's a long version of the answer to your question, Robbie, which is, did NASA help seal the deal? Oh, absolutely, which is why we attack NASA on a regular basis in the community. Right. So here's, here's I guess, the, the next logical question about that is, mm -hmm. uh, why are they keeping the fact that we're on a flat earth a secret? There are several reasons why you would do it. The first would be, uh, trying to, holding on the, the, the man's desire to hold on to power. 
And that sounds too simple. But let me, let me I'll give you, because I did a, a couple clues on this, but I'll, I'll give you the, the short version. Imagine if this was announced tomorrow, what would happen? Let's say the UN just decided to announce it. For, I mean, that's so unlikely. It's way out there. But if it was announced, what would happen? The, it, it, three things would happen. Education-wise, uh, monetarily, the markets, and then uh, spiritually. We'll, we'll do the education one first because that's too easy. Astro, any, any, every college or university with an astrophysics or an astronomy program, and we're talking every university in the world, those programs disappear overnight. Literally, they become irrelevant to the point where nobody, those books are thrown away immediately. All the remaining sciences, say geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, anything with an ology next to it, those have to be rebuilt from the ground up to, a, to accommodate the new model. That's just part of the education system, not to mention that every observatory would have to close and, and all that other fun stuff, and all the space programs, the, the biggest class, act, class action lawsuit in the history of mankind would be NASA versus all the subcontractors and all the taxpayers and everything else. That's just the education part of it. The, mon the, the monetization of, of the world we, as it is now will completely change, but, it's also, but that's mostly tied to spirituality. Meaning, if this place was built, you know, if, if it is a dome, you know, if it is an enclosed system, then it was built, which means there's a creator. And if there's a creator, that means there could be someone that's been looking over your shoulder for, for ever since you've been born. No, we're not talking a heavy-handed thing, but you, you know, the, what's the, the line I use every once in a while? Um, Santa Claus. Oh, perfect for the holiday season. No one really cares about the naughty and nice list by Santa Claus, right? But you would if you actually saw him sitting in your living room eating cookies. At that point, the naughty and nice list becomes totally serious, totally a real thing. Yeah. And that's what we're, you know, do you go to, if there really is a creator out there, because that's really what it boils down to. If there is a creator out there, do you go to war? Do you commit hate crimes? Do you do anything malicious? Do you steal? I mean, do the Ten Commandments all of a sudden come back into play? Do you, you know, what about sexism, uh, racism? You name it. Do you do anything malicious? I won't. I can tell you that right now. I've, in fact, since this thing's come out, I mean, not that I was really doing it anyway, but I won't do anything malicious to anyone ever again. Because You know, you're absolutely right. And that's, and that's kind of, you know... Um, I look at, I walk outside and I look at things so much different because yeah. on a round earth, the uh, on a ball theory, they have us so insignificant. We are a grain of, of, of sand amongst billion trillions of stars in a, in a, in a, amidst millions of galaxies. Okay. We are so yeah. insignificant. Yeah. And, and that, once um, once you come to this realization and once you look at the Bible, which does back up this theory um, more than I, I could even imagine when I first started this, you know, you realize that God is right there. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Like he says, you know, the world's his footstool. <laughs> right. I mean, he's, he's right there. I mean, you literally above that blue, that blue uh, ceiling is his throne. He is right right there we are literally living in a snow globe yeah all right it's not a snow globe but a uh terranium yeah. kind of setting and it reminds me of the Simpsons. do you remember the simpsons episode where um lisa is like the god and she's like she's got this little terranium and there's oh yeah, in, yeah 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 you know, yeah she's looking yeah. down at them and they're like oh it's god that's how it is yeah yeah and it's it i'll, I'll give you even the, the more simple version of it because people say, well, all you're talking about is hypothetical and it may not descend into chaos. It's like, well, it doesn't matter because the powers that be don't take chances. But I'll use the Air Force one. If you're into conspiracies, you know full well there have been UFOs flying around up there for a long time. I can see them with night vision binoculars anytime in a clear sky. I mean, they're out there. But the Air Force will never admit to it because if you would, if the Air Force admits that there's UFOs, it also they're also admitting there's someone up there that's better than they are. You can't be the, you can't rule the skies if you don't rule the skies. Same thing applies here. And that is governments, the, the, the rule of thumb when it comes to power with governments is you don't admit to any power that's higher than you. 
And the the last thing they want to do is admit. I mean, really, you're going to take the how seriously you're going to take the government if all of a sudden you realize that government is just another group that's inside an enclosed structure, you know, right. inside a snow globe. They are just as insignificant. Well, basically, yeah. they're just as insignificant as we are. Yeah, their power gets undermined, and so right. it's a quick meeting that happens back in the late '50s, early '60s, where you know the, the group of, I used, I call them the authority. You, know, you can call them whatever secret society you want, but I just call them the authority. And that is, they sit around a table, and all those things I just rattled off came, mm -hmm. you know, were were put to them in a briefing. That vote was probably one of the fastest votes ever. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to tell anyone this until we absolutely have to. How long can we hold on to it? How much okay. money will it take and who has to know? Which I know will segue into one of your later questions. So. And that was where I was going to segue. Now we know the why, or the, the why but now we, I want to know the how. Here's a question that I get all the time, especially this is, this is the main one with my boyfriend that I just can't answer. And he says, how, how is this being kept a secret? How can all of these um, airline pilots, all these ship captains, um, you know, be navigating this plane planet and not know that we are not on a sphere. No one knows. That's, that's the, the, the short version of this is that for something this big, and I, I talked about this in one of the clues, whereas uh, the Truman show is the opposite. If you remember the 1998 Jim Carrey movie, the Truman show, where you created a structure, a dome like structure, go figure to hide the fact that one person was living inside a uh, sound studio so you could record his life, but everybody was in on it. Everybody was in on it. Here's the thing, when you create a bigger structure, if you create it big enough and a couple generations go by, nobody has to know. And by that, I mean, if we are in a structure that is thousands of miles wide and thousands of miles high, the natural barriers that are in place around the Antarctic are such that most people would never going to go out there anyway. The ceiling right. on this thing is so high that commercial pilots would never would never see it. Uh, remember, uh, commercial airlines cap out at about 10 miles high. Uh, I can't mm -hmm. remember what that is in kilometers. And spy planes, let's say double that, 20 miles or give or take. The, if this thing, the, if the ceiling of this sucker was at least 400 kilometers, say 500 kilometers high, the very, very few people would ever... And those that have gone high enough are pretty much all Freemasons. Well, yeah, there's only, and people can look this up, there's only about 500 people that are even claimed who have gone into space. And <laughs> 90, I think Jaron did a wonderful video on this where uh, the people say, well, they're civilians. It's like, no, 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 95% of them are military or ex-military. That's how they pick them. Don't ever think that you could just join an astronaut program. You've got to go through the military first. And yes, the, the Masons are tied to this, which is you know, the whole Mason doctrine is the, that you're swore, you swear under multiple levels of secrets. Oh, yeah, under consequences of death. Oh, yeah, yeah. How many different ways can we kill you for revealing the secret is the, the big Mason thing. It might as well be their T-shirt. We're actually going to get to that a little bit later uh, about the astronauts. Yeah, um, but I've talked to, nobody has to know. I mean, yes, in fact, even the astronauts nowadays. Now, do I think the Apollo astronauts knew? Yes, I do think that, that the Apollo program, the, the, the movie, The Right Stuff, they tried to recruit heroes and that's what they signed up for. And then mm -hmm. it was a bait and switch and they told them exactly, not only did they tell them they were going to have to fake it, but they told them why. The astronauts nowadays are, don't know anything. Because you don't have to tell them. They realize it's like, okay, apparently the weight of this thing is just soul crushing on, on guys like that. So let's just, the new astronauts, the, the ISS guys, and what used to be the shuttle guys, they're going to know they're faking something, but we're just going to have them sign a non-disclosure agreement, which says, well, you don't have the clearance and it's way above your pay grade to know why. And they'll be fine with that. And that so far, that's worked pretty well because the astronauts, they're, they're supposedly doing this stuff on the ISS. They're, they couldn't be happier. You know, you don't see them in press conferences losing it. And, and, you know, as soon as the conference is over, they crawl into a bottle of scotch. These guys are, are, are holding their own. So, in, in fact, I've well, talked. Sorry, go ahead. Even if, you, even if you look at their uh, press conferences, you know, I mean, what was the three the three astronauts? They look like they were bored as heck. I'm oh, yeah. telling you, if I went to the moon, I would be ecstatic. You know, oh, yeah. there's, there's that... videos of, of them being approached and, you know, they get very offensive and, you know, very violent in oh, some yeah. cases. 
The uh, yeah, the that first international press conference with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and uh, crap. I'm telling you, they looked like they were just oh, yeah. you know, I, I can't even explain the looks on their faces. They did not look like three men that uh, just came back from the moon. No, no, not at all. Robbie, you have a question. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Um. Yeah, we've we've uh, obviously. So you might have to tip me down a little bit, Laurie. I can hear you mute myself coming through. I'd just like to say a big shout out to my friend Milton, my other trooper, the one I, uh, another person I woke up to the the, the flat Earth, and um, keep continuing with NASA. Um, do, do you actually believe that the ISS is actually up there, or it could be some kind of hologram and whatnot, whatnot? And also, where where you go with you know the actual philosophy of the flat Earth of um, all the institutions institutions breaking down. Would you think? Well, we obviously because you know what the, the the new world order agenda is. That at some point they're going to want to introduce this alien deception card that they've been planning for a long time. Do you think that if the flat Earth actually came out onto the mainstream, either by design or by accident, do you think that they would try and use that to their advantage somehow? Yes, they do. Um, to answer your your first question. The ISS, do I believe there's people up there? No, I don't. And there's several reasons I don't. One of is one of them is the I have to link back to the Apollo program, which people say, okay, I, I love it when conspiracy guys do this. They'll say, well, the Apollo program, okay, that was a piece of crap and that was obviously faked, but the ISS is real. It's like, why, why would you, why would that be real? Dude, if once, you know, treat it no different than the, and you see this on movies every once in a while. Once you fake something, you might as well fake it all because if you get busted for it, it's not going to make any difference. If you're going to murder once one person in the room, and you're going to you you might you might as well murder them all because you're going to either way the punishment is going to be the same. Uh, the same same thing here. The ISS. When I first started watching the footage, and again, it wasn't me who, who started doing the, the real granular research on the ISS, the production value of the internal shots of the ISS are horrible. They mm -hmm. are some, it's some of the worst. I mean, the Hollywood, Hollywood directors would be embarrassed by, by some of the, the techniques that are used here. Um, the, the, people don't know what I'm talking about. Look up stuff like, oh, I don't know, hairspray. You know, the, the fact that women to, to simulate zero gravity are using hairspray and their hair does not flow naturally. It's it's per, it's permed. It's permed in place. Uh, the mm -hmm. fact that they're taking sponge uh, sponge baths around electrical panels and water is flying everywhere. Uh, the fact that they are uh, uh, showing gravity shifts from time to time. Almost no continuous unedited footage that cannot be faked. Everything is being faked up there on a regular basis. There's no... Uh, in fact, I could go on. The, the, no, the, the, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've got water droplets on the windows. We've got, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that don't. How about how about how about hatches? The fact that no one it should be like a submarine. This is a vacuum sealed area. You should be opening and shutting doors on a, like a submarine on a regular basis, and you never even see the doors. Let Did alone... you ever see that video about the bendy doors? Oh, yeah, God. yeah, the outside bendy doors, absolutely. Oh, here, here's one more thing, and this they took this right out of the, the Apollo moon program um, a playbook, which was everyone's so happy up there all the time. And, and you're thinking, somebody quoted to me recently, it's like, look, you have a micrometeor the size of a nickel could punch right. a hole in that thing. Those guys are all dead, and yet they're all floating around in khakis and polo shirts and no shoes what how is no you don't you see anyone in a space suit you know practicing you know here's just in case a a, a section gets a an airlock you know an air a vacuum seal issue no one yeah. ever does that they're constantly yeah you know, and plus they're sending up stuff there's too much stuff up there that is way outside the lines when it comes to necessity uh if right. you, you know, if you look it's like if you look up the prices on how much it costs to send something up there, if you believe it, it's like what eight to ten thousand dollars an ounce, and yet guitars, flutes, Christmas trees, um, <coughs> sports equipment, a gorilla suit. I mean, how much would it cost to send a gorilla, a full blown gorilla suit up there? It doesn't make any sense. It's not even beyond cost effective. Ugh. 
the ISS is just horrible footage. Horrible, horrible. Plus, again, the, 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 what I mentioned earlier, there's no one ever will walk outside the ISS and do a 360 with a camera running. They won't do it. It's, it's either filmed in a zero-G simulator or underwater in, their, in you know, their giant underwater tank simulator, or it's a combination of that and green screen. And we've already seen on different videos that they're using blue screen for it. Well, here's That's another true. thing is, you know, we never see or uh, satellites in any Right, way. right, right, right. Yep. The, the, there's no, find me out of the 10,000 satellites. And I'm sorry, Robbie, I got to answer your second question here in a second, though, uh, which is because it's it's kind of a big one. What's this leading to the, the whole alien invasion? Could it be used to your advantage? I, I will get to that, I promise. But the satellites thing is also another one. There should be thousands of satellites flying up there. The ISS doesn't take a picture of any of them ever, even by accident. It's like, oh, there's a there's an NBC satellite floating underneath us. Nope, nope. And even with a zoom lens, you never ever see these little sparkly, shiny satellites. Or if anyone's seen the movie, seen the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, which is about how one satellite got hit by something and then turned into this gauntlet of, sh sh you know jagged metal that was taking out everything out in its path including astronauts that should have happened a long long time ago all you need is one micrometeor mm -hmm. to send a satellite spinning and they're all in roughly you know the same sort of orbits these things it would have been a shooting gallery a big pinball it, it, all the satellites would have been taken out it would have been a cascade effect and not only find me find me an article where a satellite got taken down by a micrometeor not only do you not ever hear of a satellite going down they don't even seem concerned when a meteor shower comes into play you know there's annual meteor showers and mm -hmm. you think all these satellites would be retasked and be running for their lives they do the exact opposite nobody cares you think somebody say whoa a possible disruption to service where's the news stories of the how satellites could get knocked out by meteor showers never ever happens ever ever find me a satellite find in fact my i'll end on this one Find me a picture of a satellite that took a picture of another satellite in the last 10 years. Find me one. We'll wait. <laughs> Actually, we won't. Good luck with that. One. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. To answer to answer your other question, Robbie, do I do I think that they could use this to their advantage? Yes. I think Flat Earth is being allowed. I know we're kind of jumping ahead here, but might as well talk about it. F Flat Earth is being allowed as a topic. And I think it is part of something bigger. I have said this for a long time now, which is if you wanted to shut this down or repress it, you could do it very, very easily. Most of the people that have emailed me or, phone, or, or called me or done whatever with me have said that, yeah, I got into Flat Earth because it, for whatever reason, either one of two things happened. Either it was recommended to me on the, on the, on the YouTube sidebar, recommended for you, even though you're looking at JFK. Oh, recommended for you, Flat Earth. Or because of the, the YouTube auto feature where their video stopped playing or you know, and they were just doing whatever and they weren't at their computer and all of a sudden it kicks in a flat earth video for no apparent reason. Do you know how unbelievably easy that would be to stop from a coding standpoint where all you have to do is say, you know, even the YouTube algorithm say, if you see a video with flat and earth next to it or earth is flat or these little combinations, don't ever recommend it. To anybody don't put it in autoplay you could just repress it and yet the opposite has happened to where now and i challenge anyone who's listening to this go into your favorite search engine and type in earth is and see what shows up or type in is the you know the those two words that's a really generic is the say, tell me what, what you see when you type those things in there that's happened in the last year because so many people are looking at this thing so do I think it's as it's being set up as for something bigger? Yes, because flat earth opens your mind to so many other things. I mean, I can't judge anybody for any conspiracies nowadays because I start my day with a big breakfast bowl of flat earth. And, <laughs> and so now do I think it's be set up for something bigger? Yeah, a, a, aliens could show up in a giant golden ship and anybody that's looking to flat earth, they're not going to freak out at all. They're going to be like, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. And because mm -hmm. the first thing they're going to say is, I wonder if they're the ones that built it. Yeah, is that, that's yeah, the, the, the follow-up question. Sorry, anyway, go ahead. There is, there is that one. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the prognosis is that if we do live under a firmament and we can't go out into any space, then obviously if they're going to bring an alien deception, then the aliens are already here. They can't come from inside the dome because if they could get inside the dome, then we could get possibly get out. Yeah. So, you know, that's just uh, my opinion. No, no, I like it. 
So, okay, so now here's another question that people often tend to ask me is uh, going along with the satellites. Um, how do how do satellite phones work? Oh, I think it's I think it's all tied to the same way that the GPS system works. I think it's all being done with one of two ways. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be to just keep using the existing Loran system. Remember, before GPS, there was the Loran, L-O-R-A-N system. And I think really they've just enhanced that with more towers mm -hmm. and more cables and right. turned it into, they just slapped a GPS sticker on it and say, oh yeah, there's 30-something satellites that are flying around and that's that how you get tracked even though the plane thing doesn't happen. But, it just seems weird that, you know, we all went to this, you know, um, Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. With the TV system, you know how it, we went from analog to something else? Oh, to digital TV. and then... The digital, right. Yeah. It just seems funny. At that same time, we saw an uptick of these, all of a sudden, these these towers going up all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the other thing, because people are going to say, well, my direct TV dish, it does point up in the sky. I'm going, okay, it does. There might be something up there. No question. You know, is it... Is it... I have no I have no no uh, doubts that there's low uh, low uh, orbit things up oh, yeah. there. But do I think there's satellites? No, I don't think there's satellites. Uh, I have seen a lot of stuff flying up there, and the, most of the stuff I've seen, they're def they're not us. They're they're flying way too fast and way too erratically. Look up you want to look up some fun things. Look up the the NASA high altitude balloon projects that have go been going on since the 50s all the way through present day where they're putting up big payloads and why is NASA is doing this I don't know but that would be an easy way to do it if you want to put something up there or you know in a pinch if you want to really take a take a stretch at this if if the direct TV beam is, is bouncing off of something if you knew it was a structure all you have to do is beam a signal to that point in the structure and then point all the dishes towards that and that would simulate it as well not too tough to do any of these things right wow so okay let's uh i think i want to i want to go back kind of back to uh admiral bird yeah so okay um i want there's a lot of a lot of uh people in the chat room chatting and i i this is this is the thing that that i i need to clarify right you didn't need to clarify when we say flat earth we're not talking about pancake flat people okay Oh yeah, you or want not, me to you want me to describe it, kind of? Yes, if okay. you could, because I think people have this misconception when we say flat, because they're you know they think just pancake flat. There's there's that's just it. You know, they're saying how can there be cities underneath? How can they be digging underneath if it's flat? Got it, got it, got it. No, okay. no, no. I mean, we're talking relative flat, meaning of course we know there's mountains, we we know there's rolling hills, right. and we know there's a depth to certain things. And I, I believe me, I was the first one to. to to really look at this hard because I didn't even believe in the pure flat model. And people were coming at me over the, the first few months that I was doing this because I didn't even touch on the curve and the clues. I, I believed in the, uh, if you want to look it up, the Orlando Ferguson map from the 1800s, <laughs> which was called the flat and stationary earth map where it's shaped kind of like, a, like an old hubcap. Now, normally I'd say roulette table, but then people reminded me that, hey, if you add up all the numbers in a roulette table, they add up to 666. True, I did not know that. And so now I can't say roulette table officially, but now I, I still am using it from time to time. Uh, but when we say flat, we mean flat-ish to where from our standpoint, if you, if you went up high enough to where the mountains became just specks, you would never notice them. It's still going to be perfectly flat. But, but, and by that, b b the big reason is because people kept coming at me and saying, you know, there's, we can't actually do a test. And of, of course, that was a year and a half ago. And now there's so many tests. You can't actually find the curve. So, if, and it, for those of you who are out there that haven't dealt with any of this curve stuff, the official, the mainstream science curvature is eight inches per mile square. Right. Which is, right. and this is not hard math, it's easy to understand. That doesn't mean it's eight inches every mile. That means it's eight inches every mile, but it gets steeper because it has to, because eventually you have to form a curve and eventually you have to go completely vertical and then come underneath and come back around. So, <laughs> so two, two miles would be two times two, which is four times eight inches, which is 32. Three times three is nine times eight is 72. It gets worse to where when you get up to a hundred miles, 
you're talking 100 times 100 times 8, which is, you know, just under 7,000 feet of curvature. You're saying, well, okay, what does that got to do with anything? I'm going, well, side to side, you're not going to notice that much. So if you're looking at a horizon and you're never, ever going to see the, the curvature looking side to side, but forward and backwards, you sure the heck should be able to see curvature because you're talking about looking on the other side of a hill. And we've seen objects, so take your pick. In fact, I've ch put a challenge out to anybody in the science community, find me an object, say 120 miles or less that we can't see. And, and they say, what are you talking about? I'm going, meaning, show me a lighthouse, show me a building, show me anything at, at a certain distance where with a naked eye, you can't see it. But when I take a digital camera and crank up the zoom, I can now see it again. No optic should be able to bring that boat back into frame or that lighthouse back into frame. It should be gone. You can't look on the other side of a hill. We all know this, but yet we still can. And that happens time and time again. So, sorry, as far as the curvature goes, when we say flat, we mean relatively flat. So from elevation, it's going to look flat. But of course, down on the ground, we have ground features. Throw one more thing in, into there though, because you mentioned underground cities or underground things. Uh, remember, and again, most people don't know this, and this is when I was researching flat earth, I stumbled across this, which was the deepest hole ever drilled, ever, by, you know, non-military, because military, you never know. But uh, any corporation has ever drilled is only eight miles, which is about 12 kilometers. That's not very deep. And you're saying, well, what's that guy's do with anything? I'm going, okay, open up a science book and look at the core of the earth and how the earth's laid out. You got, the, you know, you got those red bands and it goes to orange, then yellow, then that white glowing center. And you're going, yeah, I'm going, okay, how, if you only did dug down eight miles and it's supposedly 4,000 miles to the center of the earth. How did you know about the other bands exactly? How, how exactly do you know the rest of what the earth looks like? And, and so science will back pebble on that one. You can look up on Wikipedia. They say they absolutely are extrapolating from, from volcanoes and, and whatever comes up to the surface. They have no idea what's down there. And they really, really don't because they've only drilled down eight miles. So, and you say, well, why do they put that in the textbooks? And I go, because science doesn't like question marks. Science, what well, the last thing they're ever going to do is show you a cross section of a globe and put a big question mark in the middle of it, because that just prompts a whole bunch of people. It, it takes away from the credibility of science. Sorry. Anyway, I'm going off on a rant here. That was kind no, of it's actually while you were talking about that, I pulled up a, I pulled up the, 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 um, the scale on the eight mile um, breakdown. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and, and here's the thing is you go into great detail on in your um, your documentary, mm -hmm. you go you go into great detail and you tell um, basically that uh, we're kind of kept here because we can only go so high and then the air gets thin. We can only go so low be, or so deep in the earth because it, the temperature rises and you can only go out so far because of the drop in the temperature, correct? Right. The, the natural reinforcements, the negative reinforcements that are part of this world. And this is not part of what we have done. The only thing that human, our civilization has done is kept the secret. And even then, I think we've only kept it for about 60 years. I think before that, even we didn't know for sure. But the natural, whoever built this place built in some wonderful negative reinforcements because you don't want, all comes down to humanity's resistance to being capped, being in captivity. Every other species on this planet, I sound like Mr. Smith when I say this, every other species uh, <laughs> develops a natural equilibrium. No, they, they, they have no problem with living within a giant cage as long as it's comfortable enough, so, which is why we have some wonderful uh, animal reserves. You know, you make put a thousand acres and put some buffalo in it. They don't care. But you, right. put, you put a person in a thousand acre animal reserve, they're going to absolutely care. They don't care how beautiful it is. And if there's mountains and streams and wonderful things to eat, they do not care. All they care about is what, you know, who put them in this? Why are they there? How can I get out? And the natural negative reinforcements, if you want to build a world to keep people in and acting naturally, are genius. Some of the moves, like for example, uh, the oceans being 3% salt solution. 
that three percent salt solution, and you pretty much restricted natural exploration by ships by about ninety percent because you can't drink the water that you were using. I mean, most of the ship travel was limited to how much fresh water you could take with you right. on the trip. Um, the, when you get out to Antarctica, fascinating. Uh, the water gets colder and colder to where it, you know, at 15 degrees it starts um, forming icebergs. And that will generally turn most ships away because people are scared to death of icebergs. And then when you get to Antarctica, it's 150, 200 feet straight up wall of ice. Good luck trying to get climb that without modern tools. And then once you get up there, it starts the, the, the land, which is, you know, no plant life, no animal life, nothing there to, you have to bring your own supplies. You, um, the ground starts sloping up to about two miles high. That's about 14,000 feet, or I'm sorry, more than that to, yeah, more 10,000 to 14,000 feet high, uh, uh, uh high altitude sickness kicks in at about 7,000 feet, half that, right. the whole place just screams, go away. But, but the thing is, it's negative natural reinforcement. So when you finally do turn back because you've got frostbite and you ran out of food and, and you just ate your best friend, the, um, th that is because you think it's your idea. And that's why you turn back. You don't think, you know, there's no sign. There's no literal sign out there that says, you know, turn back, mortals. You know, there's no frost giant standing in front of a giant gate or anything like that. Um, and then when it comes to the upper atmosphere, that's easy. Uh, you, know, you just keep reducing the oxygen. Up to where again, seven thousand feet. It starts getting thin. You know, you can't climb Mount Everest without oxygen tanks. And then if you're going down, when you're digging down, eventually it gets hotter and hotter to where your drill bits and your mining equipment cannot dig any deeper than eight miles. So all, but again, each of these natural reinforcements, they don't say, you know, they don't prove there's a god or anything, but because they're subtle. They, they, they're tolerance things. So it's, like, it's getting really hot. We should turn back. And you do. But you don't immediately think we're being, you know, thwarted by a higher power. Nobody thinks that. But if you combine all three of these, you know, the upper, the upper section, the lower section, the outer section, it's, it really, really gives a feeling of, okay, it's a very, very clever uh, terrarium slash planetarium slash wildlife preserve slash, uh, you know, all these things. And it's, that's, again, when, when I was looking at it, I was going to, because I had to look at it from the creator's point of view, which was how would I hide the world exactly? And then I had to go into the human side of it. It's like, okay, how do I keep the world hidden? And they did sort of the same stuff, which was, okay, the first thing was, I don't know if you want me to get into this, like the Antarctic Treaty. I, that was actually one of my next things. And I was going to say, you know, actually speaking of, you know, no sign saying go back, go back. Uh, I wanted to address the, you know, Admiral Byrd. Here he does. He goes there on a science expedition, comes back. And then the next time he goes, it is now a military ex expedition. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. He was, uh, again, part of the reason I, I focused on him was because I used to be in the hall into the hollow earth theory. And mm -hmm. He, so he, 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 everyone knows that he, that's what he's known for, Hollow Earth. 1926, he goes up to the North Pole, supposedly finds an opening, blah, blah, blah. But that's not where he kept going. You would have thought he would have just kept going up there if that was such a big deal, but he didn't. He spent the rest of his life from 1928 all the way up until his death in 1957 down at the South Pole. And like he was looking for something and he flew his own planes and the planes got more advanced and he stayed the rest of his life was dedicated to Antarctica. And in 1946, of course, when he goes back right after World War II, everybody was doing explorations in Antarctica on, with the exception of World War II, when there was only one country that was doing explorations in Antarctica. And that country was, big surprise here, Indiana Jones fans. Germany. Germany, Nazi Germany. They were the only ones that were down there. And then, for some reason, after World War II had, end, had ended, all, immediately, or after you know, the, the surrender documents were signed in the Pacific, the, uh, Admiral Byrd launches uh, Operation High Jump, where he takes a full-blown carrier fleet, you know, support ships, the whole nine yards, uh, thousands of men, down to Antarctica. And people saying, oh, did he root out the Nazis? Did he battle the Nazis? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. You know, the, that thing's sealed up pretty tight. But what we do know is, is less than 10 years later, in 1954, he goes on national television 
and says that mm -hmm. Antarctica is the future. It's going to be the greatest thing ever. There's enough it's places made out of money and all these. In fact, he was worried about conflicts and war starting down there. Everybody that could be down there in 1954 was. And he was setting up for his final mission, what turned out to be his final mission in 1955, called Operation Deep Freeze, where he goes down there. And then he found something. Whatever it was, whatever he had been looking for for 30 years, he finally figured That's Murphy's Law, by the way, where he comes on television and says, well, apparently, let's just, everyone should be down there forever and ever. And then he finds something in 1955, 56, and then all of a sudden the Antarctic Treaty is put into place. The where... only treaty that has never been broken in the how many years that, you know, it's been in place. Oh, yeah. Not not just not never been broken, but it's unilateral. No right. nation has even no nation has never uh, has never broken it. No nation has even protested against it. And, and if you challenged guys were, it. Yeah. The, and the treaty says no corporation ever in the his anywhere in any country doesn't matter how much money you have can do business can do any resources can do anything down in antarctica mm -hmm. ever and that is so not like us you know our right. civ our civilization is based on ma power and greed and money money can get you anywhere you know petroleum i'll, I'll just pick a, on the oil companies because they're so good at it if an oil company wanted to start fracking in your backyard tomorrow they could do it it's just a question of who they're going to bribe to do it. Most of the time, they just go to the people. You know, they, They'll just call you up and say, hey, look, here's a briefcase full of money. We want to start fracking. Be like, sure, why not? And even if you said no, your neighbors are going to do it, and they'll, they will find a way to get in there. Right. But the oil companies, not only are they not allowed to go down there, they're not even allowed to talk about it. <clears throat> they, you'd think, well, why, why not run a story? Why not run a... Um, uh, uh, you know, if I was an oil company, I'd run a fr full page ad in the New York Times every week saying, would be great for Mark's oil company to be down in Antarctica. They're not even allowed to do that. That's how, that's how finely, uh, written this treaty is in some ways. There's some things in the treaty, which aren't allowed to the public. I'm sure that are just allowed, mm -hmm. you know, for, for people that, and high ranking things. But it, once your country becomes an ec economic power, they are met there. You're supposed to sign this treaty and this treaty isn't even up for review right now until 2041. It's, like it's, yeah. it's mind boggling, even though, and people say, well, it's because of the environment. It's because of uh, the nature stuff. I'm going, no, 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 no. Greenpeace wasn't even founded until 19, the early 1970s. And even then it was a couple of hippies in a raft, you know, the, 1950, <laughs> 1959 environmentalism wasn't even a word. We right. they didn't have they didn't have the Bob Barker they didn't have all those fancy DNC you know equipment out there you know no. saving the whales or anything they just you know no uh, save save the whales was not even a concept and and right. even if it was even if you want to use that argument you're telling me that no country China China's not going to go down there Russia when they were trying to rebuild from World War II or, or British Petroleum trying to rebuild from from World War II none of these companies were had the right to go down there and they all signed it without question. Nobody is protesting. It's like, oh, you know, China abstains from the Antarctic Treaty. Right. When does this happen? It's it is one of those uh, suspicious beyond uh, multiple levels of suspicion, where you you're looking at something. It's like, okay, fine. Does that prove a flat Earth? That just proves there's something weird in Antarctica. I'm going, yeah. Except that when it was ratified in 1959, that happened to also be the same year that the Van Allen Belt was announced by NASA. The exact same year. And you're thinking, okay, fine, that's a coincidence. Go, well, is it a coincidence? Because if I was going to, if I had figured out that the world was a certain shape, that's that was something that exactly I would do. You seal off the outer edge, you seal off the upper edge as as much as you can, and that's what they did. And it they have have held on to it, and it has worked very, very well. Antarctic Treaty has never been broken, and up until recently, there has been no private space program. Uh, if, if people think, oh yeah, that SpaceX and Virgin Galactic are going to break the, the, the secrecy, don't no, think again. You know, those guys are, are infiltrated beyond infiltrated. You, to even start up a SpaceX, you have to hire a whole bunch of ex-NASA engineers. And at that point, you either delay them or eventually you, you let certain people in on it. Uh, let the wrench turners keep building their stuff and then let, you know, figure out the telemetry guys. And Anyway, I can go on. Well, okay, so... You know, we before I get into my next topic, I want to ask you a question. Uh, 
you now what? again my boyfriend he's you know he's this isn't a topic we talk about in my house just let's just put it that way sure. um but he his his argument is that because I, I say to him you know you, about flights going to, to to antarctica yeah and he says you can get a flight to antarctica but there's really nothing there there's not a seven you know six flags there's not a uh you know a, a holiday inn there's really nothing there you have to take everything in take everything out there's really no reason for it to be there but if you wanted to go there they would take you okay the, the and I'm, I'm gathering your boyfriend's still a complete 100 percent globalist at this absolutely state? okay perfect two things there remember with when it comes to antarctica you can't the treaty seals off at least the corporate part of it but the civilian part you there isn't a good enough reason to keep people out so all you do is you control you make it very expensive you make mm -hmm. it very monitored and you don't let people just start cruising around on their own so for example yes if you want to spend fifteen thousand dollars you could go have your picture taken with the penguins down in the peninsula and that'd be fine or if you really want to spend a little extra money they would take you to where they say the south pole is and there's literally nothing there except for a ball which is interesting it's silver sphere and you go down there and you have your picture taken and some celebrities and royalty do that from time to time are you going to be allowed to take your own helicopter or your own private jet or your own series of snowmobiles and snowcats and start traipsing around antarctica no you are not you are going to be extremely limited. You have to have permits signed by multiple countries to even do anything that isn't within a certain tour guide. Right. Um, again, does that prove a flat earth? No, it doesn't. Yeah. But I, I do want to, uh, let me throw out this because I, again, I'm going to do a Strange World show tonight and you know this, this kind of plays into this, which is when it comes to, remember, because I've had subject matter experts that have come out on this and, and I have not solicited a single one of them. They have all contacted me because they watched the thing and said, you know what, you might be on something. All branches, let me rattle these off real quick. This is for your boyfriend, okay? Because mm -hmm. And all these shows, they're on the testimony show uh, listing that's on my YouTube channel. You can look it up, they're, they're, mm -hmm. all, they're all there. Uh, United States Navy missile instructor, U.S. Air Force navigator, United States Marine Corps sniper instructor, mm -hmm. submarine chief, artillery radar operator, Australian intelligence officer, American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, Career surveyor, 32 years, international shipping expert, corporate travel agent, air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, an aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor, 32nd degree mason, an etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, and a merchant marine. All these guys contacted me, all of them, and said, I didn't used to believe, and now I do. And not only, and, that, and it took me over a year to compile those guys not only have none of them recanted their testimonies, right? And quite, a, and quite a few of them aren't anonymous. You know, they actually came on air with me, gave me their names and, you know, validated everything they said. You know, like the, the American flight instructor, he's actually has his own company out in Iowa. You can look him up. Not only have they not recanted any of their testimonies, but nobody has even come out against them. You would have thought, especially with the military guys, because how hard, remember, it's easier for the people to try to debunk it. Why, why isn't a series of Navy guys come out and say, oh, I worked on Navy cruisers and we absolutely take in the account of the curvature of the earth and the spinning of the earth with our firing solutions. You know, why haven't the air traffic controllers, you know, come out and say, no, I think your radar information is wrong. Or the surveyors. The surveyors, I think, are probably the, one of the most interesting. Or the, the, the industrial yeah. engineer. Why or I haven't had an industrial engineer come out against it and say, no, the ISS is perfectly feasible. The, the, there's, mechanically, it's absolutely sound, and here's why. Or the surveyors that say, yes, uh, it, for a planar surveyor, here's, let me throw this. This this for your boyfriend right there. It, the, here's, here's an easy one for him. Tell me why there are only two types of surveyors in the world. One are planar surveyors, P-L-A-N-A-R, which and they treat all their projects like the world is perfectly flat. That is literally the definition of a planar surveyor. They account for 95% of all surveying projects ever done in the world. Geodetic surveyors, which account for less than 5% of, of, of projects, they treat the world like it's a globe, but they don't deal in anything that's being built. They only deal with like national parks, big tracts of land. Anything that has to be built is done by a surveyor that treats the world like it's perfectly flat. You say, well, yeah, but it's not, it's not really flat. 
It's like, really? Because the surveyor is the one that told me. He goes, he goes that's, it's interesting because we deal with like some the big surveyors. Mm-hmm. They're like 10-mile, 20-mile tracts of land. He goes, even if you said that, fine, we were adjusting and we, we compensated for it with a tract of land, that doesn't account for the projects to the north and the south and the east and the west of us that butt up against it. He goes, it's like, you know, it's like, it's wow. like, it's like putting, trying to cover a basketball with wheat thins. Eventually you're going to get gaps and sooner or later you're going to, you're going to find a discrepancy. He goes, not only has no one ever, he goes, not only have I never taken into account the curvature of the earth when I've done a project, he goes, I've never even heard of it. You know, when we're having coffee, it never comes up. They always tell the, the people that are getting into survey and they're going, look, treat the world like it's perfectly flat. And people say, what about the what about the curvature? They say, don't worry about it. Literally, don't worry about it. It fine. You know, well, fine. Again, the the testimony experts. I used to say that you know, um, I believe my, well, the strengths. You know, were were condemning NASA and the lack of curvature, blah blah blah. But now I'm really leaning on the 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 testimonies by all these guys. Nobody, none of these guys have called me up after the fact and said, oh, I absolutely recant everything I said. I'm a, I'm back to a globalist. The yeah, and I know I'm going off on a rant here, but think of it this way. The, the, one of the, the big strengths of the, of the whole flat earth community is, and I challenge anybody to prove me wrong, is that once you get in, there's almost a hundred percent chance you're in forever. Meaning mm-hmm. the flat earth community has like a 99.9% retention rate. The only defense against flat earth right now is not looking at it. Treat it like a literal Pandora's box where you you can make fun of it. And that's what I've seen this with debunkers. It's like, well, no, I'm not going to look at the research of Flat Earth. It's ridiculous. Flat Earth is dumb. That box is dumb. I'm not going to look at that box. And, that, and that's exactly what I'm up against. <laughs> yeah, well, once, yeah, and that's the only defense because once you look in that box for even a minute or two. You cannot unsee what you've seen and you cannot close that box. Yeah, then you become Cypher. You know, yeah, you, you know, some people regret it. They become like Cypher on the Matrix. <laughs> Where he's going, I want to be put it back in the matrix and I don't remember anything. You hear me? Right. Nothing. But the rest of us, it, and again, people come and go with the flat earth as far as, you know, making videos and, and doing, you know, things like we're doing now. But no one leaves it. Uh, right. It's, it's, it, you're in. You're, there's nothing you can do. You can't, you will not go back to the globe because you can't. There's not <laughs> enough weight on the globe side. So I, if he listens to this, hopefully I get something out of it. Uh, I, I hope he does. I mean, <laughs> besides. <laughs> Besides me being single in the morning, um, <laughs> just kidding. Nice. You can't get married until he's a flat earther. <laughs> right. Now, okay, we said that. Um, okay, we talked about Admiral Byrd and we talked about the treaty. Mm-hmm. Now, recently, uh, Russia took an item that was recovered in Saudi Arabia, uh, Mecca to be precise. Um, they took this 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 uh, Ark of Gabriel, so they're calling it. Yep. And um, they took this to Antarctica, and one of their high priests did a ceremony over it. And then uh, after that, we saw, you know, John Kerry went down there uh, election day this year. John Glenn just uh, was airlifted out of there. Why all of a sudden this uh, this string of, of important people heading to this area? Is there something that was discovered there recently? Is there, why is, why does it seem like an uptick of activity down there lately? I agree. And there's, yeah, there's something more going on there. I do not, I mean, I could speculate for a while on this one, Yeah. Uh, but there is definitely something going on. Uh, the, the, the Russian Pope that went down there was very interesting because that started even earlier, in my opinion, when Leonardo DiCaprio and I put a video on this, went to the actual, you know, the full-blown Roman Pope, went to, you know, he was the only, he was went there to talk about climate change, but then during, and remember, the Pope was in an extremely tight schedule. Even Leonardo DiCaprio only had like 15 minutes with the guy, and he mentioned, he gave him a book of paintings, and one of them was the uh, the Garden of Earthly Delights, and he and he called it out. He's on video talking about it. He goes, "This was this pit painting was hung above my crib when I was a child, and it showed us when we thought the earth Earth was flat." And he thought, "Okay, maybe he's gonna let he's gonna stop there." No, he keeps going and says, "And I think it is a vision of uh, of, of a promise of the future and enlightenment." It's like, what are you talking about? He's he's you know he's on camera telling this. You know, it's he and the Pope and the Pope's bodyguards. Then, then that Pope goes to, I think it was Cuba and meets with the Russian Pope 
And then that pope goes down to Antarctica, and then uh, what Obama takes his trip down to supposedly down around Argentina, you know, South South America. We don't know if he went. John Kerry. What was John Kerry doing down there on election night? How does that happen? The Secretary right. of State, one of one of Hillary's biggest proponents. Why is he in Antarctica on election night? Uh, there's something really weird happening down there. You know, is it kind of like a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark type of thing? Maybe. Very possible that they're, the artifact, the, the Russian fleet going down there, there's some creepy stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I, I'm super intrigued by it. I wish we had more info, but eh, those things are usually kept pretty, pretty tight. We're lucky actually to get any info at all. Yeah. Now, what is your take on uh, the theory that they're, they found an escape route, that the glass or I'm sorry, glass. the ice ring is separating us from, from land on the other side. It's, it's possible. Get a memory, though. This world it was designed to hold us in. I, the, one of the most intriguing stories that I ever heard was that during Operation High Jump, when Admiral Byrd was down there supposedly that, you know, uh, confronting the Nazis, that the Nazis, that there is a place that you could actually ask for asylum. That's the, the, the rumor, and that the Nazis ask for asylum. But when you do that, there's protocols, like anything. You know, this world has rules. And the, the, the story goes that if you ask for asylum, you can, they, you know, they said, okay, fine, you, you, can, you can leave, and, and, and you, can, you don't have to, but you can't come back. So when the, which is why we never heard from the Nazis ever again, was like, okay, they, they opted out, but you can't go back, which sort of makes sense because it go, it falls into the same line of logic of why a UFO has never landed in main street anywhere. People say, well, there's no UFOs because why haven't they landed on the white house lawn? It's like, are you kidding? Have you watched star Trek? Do you know what the prime directive is? It influences people so heavily that you can't you, you, you say say a ship all of a sudden landed in the middle of Iowa, you know, and some Main Street came out, took pictures, shook hands, a couple selfies, and signed autographs and left. That town would be changed forever. Multiply that on a, on a massive scale. So yeah, is the could there be a, an exit down there? No question. Do I think there's there's other worlds and other lands outside of this place? Yeah, you bet. This is not a one off. Uh, nor do I think we're, that we're the only uh, uh, tenants to rent this apartment. I think that there's been other civilizations. I think you know, if you, if you count from a software standpoint, you know, we're we could be version 7.0. You know, who 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 was version three? Who was version one? You know, are, when you get down to version one, are we going into the biblical side of things? At that point, are we talking the fallen? Where where we go from there? Uh, but no, I don't think for a second that we're the first civilization there. If you have any doubts, look up the, the sunken cities that are out, off of Japan, the sunken cities that are off the coast of India, uh, the, the pyramids. You know, Who were they built by? Not the people that are living there now, not the descendants right. of those guys. Uh, the Bosnian pyramids. Uh, go on. Uh, Atlantis. What, what the heck is buried under the Bermuda Triangle? With the Bimini Road. We go on and on. I think those are remnants of the previous versions of this place, that this place just keeps getting more advanced and more evolved and that we are part of a longer line of civilizations. Did you get the idea listening to Admiral Byrd that he was scared of what he found there? No, I don't think he was scared as much as he understood the for lack of a better word the gravity of it he knew what it meant for, well even then i think admiral bird part of the reason i think he died early you know he died in his mid 60s supposedly mm -hmm. at his home but i think he wanted to kind of like charles Lindbergh. i think he wanted to let this thing out i think he he wanted to and remember he was doing press conferences and he was a yeah he was an American. He was, hero. he was very vocal and very public with it. A very, yeah. I think he would have rather let people ha have have the info, and so I don't think he was as scared as other people. Other people, I think, looked long term. When it comes to perspective, some people can't see past fifteen minutes in front of them. Other people, they play the long game, and the authority plays games that go generations. And I think that's what they looked at here. They saw this thing and saw, oh man. There's the potential, yeah, there's the potential for a golden age, which I'd love to love to see, yes. 
but there is potential for you know rioting into the streets, end of the world types, you know, burning, you know, let's burn down everything. Yeah, there's a potential potential for that as well. It depends mm -hmm. how you release it. And only now, and I remember being frustrated years ago because I couldn't figure out why you would wait so long to, to release something like this. But now I understand the infrastructure that has to be put in place. It's not just that you would have television or radio or even internet. You need social networking in place. You need, not only that, but you need to have it in people's hands, the smartphone, to where you get the story straight and everybody gets the same story simultaneously within a matter of minutes, anywhere you are, uh, you know, in the, in the world. And that's what they were waiting for. And so now it's just a you know, question of who's, who's willing to hit the giant red button and get this thing started. Exactly. And, you know, it's, I, I, while we're talking about it, I, have you seen the, uh, the trailer for Iron Sky 2? I have seen the trailer, it, but it's not out yet, right? I uh, know it's. I don't think it's honest. To be honest with you, I don't think it's going to be released. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, because I think first, I've seen the it like first one was years. very, very interesting. I love the trailers for Iron Sky one more than I did the movie. Yes, mm. I thought I thought it was brilliant in in that capacity. But at the same time, I do believe the Admiral the, Bird high jump yeah. story just, where. They weren't the. I think the Nazis were left. I do. I think they tried to scatter all over the world. Now there's another side of it. I don't go into it too much. Who said that the Nazis did actually figure out some advanced technology and that Operation High Jump turned into the Nazis asking for the surrender of everybody, and the Nazis are actually running stuff from the, their secret Antarctic base. I'm just going. Eh, it's not bad, but they wouldn't stop at just Antarctica. Eventually they'd take over the whole world. I don't think they'd do it secretly and, and live in Antarctica, but that's just me. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm going to try to get some questions. Robbie, do you have questions? <laughs> sorry, I was, so, sorry, sorry, I was on mute there. I'm, nice, I'm, Robbie. I'm just, I'm, I'm just there in the trance, taking it all in, man. <laughs> and just say, wow. I know. <laughs> Take it all in. I know. I tend yeah. to do that from um, time to time. This, Don't ever go to sleep with me in my in your ears. Don't do it. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm wide awake on, on, on all levels. But um, <laughs> there was one. Um, there was three uh, theories that I wanted to put. One of them's already been discussed. Um, there are two theories that are being banded about right now. One of them is that. Um, I read uh, it quite long some time ago that uh, scientists have actually admitted that there's an ocean underneath the earth, say about 400 miles underneath. And also um, that the other theory that's uh, going about at the moment is that um, space is water, which would actually, you know, if this was true, uh, would actually back up the biblical account of the flood. Um, just oh, sure. What your thoughts. Sure, not yeah, and not just the floods, but the uh, um, the Genesis, the firmament, the the waters right. above and the waters below. Uh, and I'll, I'll oh jeez, how many different ways can I jump? I know we're not going to have too much time left, but no, let me throw. Like let me first first thing. Um, uh, anyone wants to have fun? Little tidbit: look up the Werner von Braun headstone, which shows mm -hmm. his day, the year he was born, the year he died, and says psalms 19 1 and you're thinking why in the world would a rocket scientist literally a rocket scientist put psalm 19 1 you look it up and it says the firmament shows his handiwork which i thought was very very interesting but when it comes to uh the flood yeah yeah very 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 possible that it could be water gotta also remember that we're living in because some people say, well, if the Earth's flat, shouldn't we be able to see from London to New York you know, on, a, on a, cl a clear day? It's like, no, because we don't – the atmosphere that we breathe is really kind of like a liquid. It's a soup. It's not as thick as water, but it's more, you know, it's eight-part nitrogen and two parts oxygen. I know there's some trace elements in there, but it's, it's, it's no different. So if we're living in you – know, if we're breathing sort of a, a fog – then why why wouldn't it be possible that space is a liquid or the barrier is a liquid? Why not? Uh, people say, well, you know, what's the what's the firmament made of? It's like, well, it could be a heavy element, could be a frequency, could be electromagnetic, could be a heavy water. Don't know. Mm. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to be more brief just because I know you got questions in the chat. 
Yeah, uh, just what, just just uh, what, one more. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you've seen it. There's a, there's, a vi- there's a video band in the back on YouTube at the moment, um, and basically there's this guy, and he's in, he's created this technology uh, that basically can see what the stars really are. Yeah. And um, they don't really look like what they what we've been told that they are. You know, they they're not giant suns. They actually uh, they've got geometrical shapes. Uh, quite intricate patterns and yeah. stuff, and I'm just wondering if you've actually seen anything about that. Um, I I've seen a couple different things on it, and it doesn't surprise me at all because if we are in a giant Truman show inside a giant planetarium, what happens? Now you could say, well, if it's a super super advanced, would it have like Mandel brought resolution where it just gets clearer and clearer? It's like, yeah, maybe, but eventually the the civilization's got to end. So why would you spend that much time on on that sort of resolution? So when you zoom in, if you live, if you ever go into a planetarium and you take like a, a high-end camera and you zoom in, eventually, yes, the, the stars that look like stars when you're just sitting there in the planetarium are going to look like something else. I think eventually our detection ability, our camera technology is, is one of the key things as far as breaking this thing down, where <clears throat> you can now see things with cameras that you couldn't have done even 15 years ago especially when it comes to the sky. Plus, more people are looking at the sky with, with skepticism. More people are taking pictures and movies of the moon. Uh, look at Crow 777 with the lunar waves. And now, yes. that, now that he's finally thinking, wait a minute, maybe it's not just a resolution issue. Maybe it's not just a refresh issue. Maybe it is a liquid issue. Uh, that, that the moon may be outside of the, the, the barrier and the barrier might be liquid. I love the fact that he was a hardcore, you know, he, he was really adamant. It's like, I'm not a... He thinks out of the box. I love the way he thinks. Yeah, it took him a while though. And it did. It, you know, where he was going, no, I'm not, do not associate me with flat Earth. And now <laughs> he's like, now he's he's like going, you know what, flat Earth, it's not completely insane. So. Yeah. I just uh, just quickly just want to ask. Yeah. Um, for you, to explain to your viewers, how would you explain clouds behind the sun in the moon? I don't know if I put that much faith in it because the optics, we don't, our optics aren't good enough to really differentiate. I mean, I've seen the movies. I don't get me wrong. I've seen the movies and I like them, but do I literally think that the clouds in those cases are behind the sun Uh, or, you know, or, you know, that there's layers where the sun is actually sandwiched in between. I, I don't put that much stock in it because there's so many other things that I focus on. Um, the, I think the, the moon temperature issue is way more compelling than, than the visual things with the sun and beyond the class. It's cool. I don't get me, do me wrong. I mean, if people want to go down that road, Hey, great. If it helps, if it helps boost the community, fantastic. I'm not going to focus on it. I'll focus more on, uh, the, the temp, the, the temperature variance of the, of the moon and how the moon generates a cold light, how that it's cold, that it's actually colder in the moonlight than it is in the moon shade, which is the exact opposite of the sun. Uh, if you guys probably have heard of it, but I, the viewers, you got to refresh them every once in a while, which is if it's 100 degrees, I'm talking Fahrenheit, you're not Celsius, 100 degrees in the sun, then it's 90 degrees in the shade. It would stand to reason that if it's 60 degrees in the moonlight, that it's 50 degrees in the moon shade, but it's actually the opposite. If it's 60 degrees in the, or it's, say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moonshade. The moon is actually generating a cold light. And I will take credit for at least one part of that experiment, which was, I was the first one to say, well, if you take a magnifying glass to the sun, you can burn paper, right, with it. But if you take a magnifying glass to the moon, what happens? Does it get warmer or does it get even colder? It turns out it actually gets colder. It's amazing. And, and you're saying, okay, what does that got to do with flat earth? What it has to do with is it completely changes what we've been told about the dynamics of the sun. If the moon is reflecting the sun's radiation, then we should be seeing just a fraction of, you know, it should be getting warmer. It's the exact opposite. It's because the moon is self-illuminated. The moon is not reflecting anything from anything. It is a completely its own entity and completely self-powered. Mm-hmm. And and going along with that, uh, a question that this was, and this this was a question that I couldn't get past for myself Mm -hmm. and I still haven't answered it, but because I have so much proof otherwise, you know, proving that, you know, that we do live on a plane that I, I just don't even think about it anymore. But I know a lot of people are when you have the, um, eclipse, 
Yep. Why is it a spherical passing in front when it's supposed to be the earth passing between the two? Well, think of it this way. In, in this, this accounts for everything you see in the sky. And I, I know I kind of downplay it, because, but that's because for me, all the hard stuff is really on the ground. When it comes mm -hmm. to the sky, everything is simulated. It's because, for example, the moon phases. Uh, when you see a waxing or waning crescent on the moon, you know, why is it sort of spherical? You know, why does it have that curved edge to it? Or why mm -hmm. do you have blood moons at all? Because blood mm -hmm. moon, you know, when the moon turns red, is mm -hmm. because the earth is supposedly between the sun and the moon. Well, that's impossible if it's on a flat earth, right? Mm -hmm. We go on and on. But what I'm saying is the sky is a giant display system. Nothing is out of bounds when it comes to the sky. Uh, I'm not copying out when I say this. I'm saying that because we do this in a planetarium. If you're in a planetarium and you want to do something special for somebody's birthday, you can put your face on the moon. It can be done. It is just software. It is super easy to do. Uh, you can spell out your name in stars. You can do advertisements. You can do, and they do. They do all sorts of fun stuff at planetariums. And they're saying, well, okay, what's, what, so what, so what? I'm going, so what if you, when you walked out of that planetarium, did you not just walk into a bigger one? When right. it comes, when it comes to the sky, everything is right. still in bounds. And, and even so far, and there's even more sophisticated stuff that the average person doesn't know about that's been in software for years, like instancing. We've been doing that in entertainment software for the last 15 years, where you can change your perspective and the view of the sky based on region. So if you and your friend are standing at, we'll say, a big planetarium. Let's say a planetarium is 100 miles wide. He's on one side. You're on the other side. You're talking to each other on cell phones. You're, you're saying, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. He goes, yeah, I'm looking at the belt of Orion, too. He, and, and, he, and he goes, hey, the middle star in my belt is blue. He goes, that's weird. He goes, mine is red. Which one's right? Well, the answer is both is right. Both are right because they are looking at completely different projection systems. You don't just get away with, you, you can do multiple, but right. numerous projection systems. It's easy, easy, easy to do the sky stuff. The hard and, But And also when you, when you think of it as a domed environment, yeah. okay, what a better big, it's a, pro, a big projection screen, yeah. basically. Yeah. And, the, and the chemicals that they're spraying, it's like, um, I don't know how old you are. I just turned 50. So I'm going back to my teenage years when we used to go to the laser light shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Laser Floyd. I know. And laser right. Zeppelin. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So, right. So what do they do before they start the laser light show? They fill the auditorium up with smoke yeah. because you need something to project the images on. Same thing is happening in our atmosphere yeah. with the dome, with the firmament. To me, and like I said, I look at, I, I go outside and I, I, there's days I cry because of the realization that I have of not only how, how close the, the most high is, but how beautiful it is. Yeah. The looking at a rainbow means so much more to me now because I see it, yeah. you know, I, I see it. It's, it, it's a rainbow for a reason, guys. It's following the, the shape of the firmament. Yeah. Yeah, I, I firmly believe, and, and there's a lot of people that, again, I don't, I don't mind because the community is, and one of the things I love about the community is that quite a few people, it's either dome or no dome, right? You know, some people believe in the firmament, some people don't, but they still, everyone still agrees on the flat, the flat-ish disc, you know, even though the map, they can't agree on that. But it, everyone's down, keeps going down to the same thing, which is they, it doesn't matter how many different people have different takes on it. They, nobody believes in the globe anymore. So, which is why I don't mind. People say, well, you know, this guy is really big and he doesn't believe in the, in the firmament or the dome. It's going, that's fine. You don't have to believe in the dome. Uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Right. I do because I think it's much, it's a much easier model to comprehend yeah. than infinite. Yeah. People don't like thinking about infinite anything. The dome, the whole snow globe thing, people can wrap their head around that. That's easy. Exactly. Somebody has a, a question in the chat room, which I was actually going to, to bring up, but I'll, I'll ask for Elite Prodigy X says, can you mention the fact that sometimes you can see the moon during the daylight in the globe, or, or say in the daylight, in a globe Earth, that would mean the other side would have moonless nights? Yeah, again, I'm... And some people are going to get something out of this. Some people aren't. When you want to look at, you want to look at some good models on, I'm going to refer, I'm going to defer this question. Look, there's certain channels, because I'm not going to be able to do it justice on the air. Certain channels that really specialize in it. One of which would be, my favorite is called My Perspective. 
It's done by a guy out in South Africa. His name's Rory Cooper. But check out my perspective. If you want to look at some of that stuff, uh, he's done some great videos on where the moon and the sun should be. Uh, another one would be zeteticism.com, which is done by Jeffrey Grupp. And, of course, uh, the, the great standby one is uh, D-I-T-R-H, which is Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole by Dave. Well, I want to, because we are running out of time here. These two hours went by so quick. Yeah. Um, I want to give you a chance to talk. Uh, Scott said that you have, uh, is this Earth, earthisflat.com? Is that you? No. No. That's weird. Why, how did you mention that, by the way? I, I, I brought it up on I brought it up on shows. Okay, yeah, Earth, Scott. Had, Scott was sending me. Uh, he's been he's been talking to me, and I just checked, and he said that you uh, you like to talk about EarthIsFlat.com. Oh yeah, well not EarthIsFlat.com. Well, okay, Earth is flat is one of the, there's two things you can search for when you're, when you're in YouTube. One is flat Earth, and that will show you most of the pro flat Earth videos. If you type in Earth is flat, you'll get pro and con. So you get some of the debunkers that will come out against it. You know, even though the flat earthers outnumber the debunkers by a wide margin, you'll still get that. But what I thought was interesting was, and um, uh, my girlfriend mentioned to me, she said that, hey, because she was looking up domains because she's purchased some of the flat earth domains. And she goes, you know, most everyone knows anything about domains. You can pick up domains on GoDaddy for what, 20 bucks? Yeah, that. six bucks, some of them. Six, six bucks. Sorry. Do you know how much <laughs> the uh, the earth is flat domain was going for three weeks ago? Uh, probably a couple thousand. About twenty six thousand dollars American. That is a lot of money for a domain that's supposedly irrelevant, doesn't have anything to do with anything. Uh -huh. That is based on demand and search results. That's a lot of people looking at this stuff. And what's interesting was it sold in the last three weeks. We don't know who bought it. That's mm -hmm. why I, I, I was going to bring it up on the show tonight and Patricia's show tomorrow where uh, somebody somebody purchased, somebody paid some serious coin for earthisflat.com, and I do not know if, it's, if they're for us or against us, but it's... Well, I, can, I can truthfully yeah, that, tell you that, it's not one of us YouTubers because we don't yeah, make that, a on our no, show. Let's just, so. let's just hope it's not the same people that bought the Weather Channel. Yeah, the oh. Weather Channel, yeah. Yeah, I, it's really interesting that that... That coincidentally, and it could be because I mentioned it because I, I brought it up on a on a, on a um, little separate YouTube thing, but it was one of the highest priced uh, websites I've ever seen. In fact, it's that's corporate pricing, basically. Yeah. That's, oh yeah. I, you, you know, co there are companies that wouldn't fork over that much money for. Yeah, that's that's an alarming number. That because I mean that is not a. Uh... Yeah. But it's, it's not a personal domain. But but no, that new earthisflat.com, I deliberate in fact, I don't even have my the official clues are called flat earth clues, which is why I try to tell people, look, if you don't remember anything, if you're not in a place to write anything down, just type in flat earth clues into any search engine. My uh, free site is enclosedworld.com. That's how I started this thing. I actually took a web class just to learn how to do my own website. Enclosedworld.com? Enclosedworld.com. Okay. The subscription site is marksargent.com. The Facebook page, which I, again, most of the stuff I don't even do. Like I didn't, the, the book, the, there's, I have a Facebook page. It's Mark Sargent. That is not run by me, but I will, you know, if you want to do something, you know, I can be contacted through that. Flat, another Facebook page is Flat Earth Clues Book. Uh, my YouTube page is Mark K. Sargent. The, the book you can go on Amazon is type, is called Flat Earth Clues. The audible, there's an audible version of the same thing. There's apps. There's three or four apps out there that you know people just keep contacting me. It's going, hey, I want to do this. Hey, I want to do this. Okay, fine. I solicit. I'm going to put the, the links to these things in the description area below the, the broadcast when we're done here. Yeah. So just you know, hey, if, I, if I'm going to sh shamelessly promote anything, it would probably be the, the Flat Earth Clues book for Christmas. If anyone wants to uh, give somebody or, or just or when you're done with it, just put in the lobby of wherever you are. And uh, right. see what see what happens because it's done. The, the illustrations are done by a children's illustrator and it's published out of by Boogles out of London. And nice. uh, I honestly thought they were kidding me when they called me up and they said, "Yeah, I'd like to turn your clues into a book." I'm going, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> for, for, for a couple months later, I get a package in the mail. Books were published. It's like, wow, really? So, wow. I know. Now you have, you have a show, Strange World. I do. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I should have probably mentioned that first since I'm going to be doing that in an hour. 
Uh, I do True Frequency Radio. They called me up. They said, because I had been interviewed by I, two or three people on their network, and they said, how would you like to do your own show? I go, can I do nothing but Flat Earth? They go, sure. And I go, okay. So we did, um, I, Strange World is on currently Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern on True Frequency Radio. And then if you can't catch it live, I put it up usually the next day on YouTube. And then I also do uh, another podcast with Patricia Steer, uh, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, and that's usually done on Wednesdays. Awesome. I know. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah cool. no true, true Frequency Radio. It's one of my old horns. I used to uh, be a, a, a guest, a co-host on the uh, Kev Baker show a couple of years ago. So, yeah, nice. Great, 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 nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, great, it's a great network. It is. Well, we want to thank you for taking time out of your obviously busy schedule. Oh, no, no. Happy to yeah. do it. This, oh, like I said, this topic is is so hot in a you know not only a hot topic but you know it's it's just uh, wherever you turn you know uh, it turns people into just three eyed three headed monsters. Oh at yeah, time, you know? yeah. It's Jeff. Definitely, what well, any producer will tell you this, which is why eventually this is going to take a next its next logical step, which is into some sort of mainstream thing, which is love it or hate it. Almost nobody can ignore it. Uh, I got yelled at um, Eminem, you know the uh, the rapper. I did a uh-huh. uh, I did an interview by one of his. He produces a couple podcasts, and one of his guys, not him, uh, one of his guys interviewed me. And I, the last fifteen minutes, they opened up the phones and they came at me like I was the devil himself. And by the time it was over, and then and it was over, and I kept the recording going, and. The producer was just couldn't have been happier because that's what you want. I mean, he, he goes, he goes, yeah, it's great. The, they they just want the buzz. You know, they want people to get emotional. Now, lots of people hated. Uh, you know, people will hate other topics. You know, lots of people hate Jersey Shore, the show. You know, mm-hmm. but it still got ratings. Uh, right. And right. that's <laughs> and that's the thing with Flat Earth. Uh, it's it's mostly liked. But the people, you're either, nobody's just, you know, nobody's on the fence going, eh, take it or leave it. Nobody's that way. You're either in it or you're absolutely against it. And it's mm-hmm. it's fascinating to, to see the fights that break out. Because, again, the people that are angry, they don't even know why they're angry. They, it takes them a while. Right. And when, and when they flip, they don't apologize. It's probably the only unsatisfying thing about this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's the indoctrination there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'd just like to ask. Um, 2017. I mean, if we're not all uh, being shipped off to FEMA camps for, for uh, reprogramming, for put doing all our shows and stuff, we were just wondering if you'd be willing to come back at some point and uh, have another uh, discussion. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy, happy to. I, I don't turn down. I think really any request. Awesome. So it's I just do- that. It's just that we've, because I said that we do, uh, we actually cover Flat Earth for the uh, Hebrew perspective. I mean, we've got a, uh, a guy called GE, and, he, and he, he'd be itching to have a open, not a debate, but an open discussion with you about certain things and, you know, just have a, a back and forth. Oh, I, I, I don't I don't mind. Honestly, I nowadays, because I've done so many of these, I'd actually prefer somebody to come straight at me with a baseball bat because... Nice. It's, it's why, why not the, we, I've got enough. I, I don't think there's been a question at this point. I haven't, that surprised me in the last six, seven months. So mm-hmm. if anyone's got something, you know, again, I'm, I'm still waiting for scientists. I, my, my, the first hardcore debate that I get anytime soon, I've got to dump off to Jeffrey Grupp because I promised him the next one. But, uh, but yeah, your guy loved to Whoever it is, love to talk to him. He's and, and G is is uh, you know he he's been on our show several times. Uh, we we get him for the the Israelite yeah. awakening, and he he does everything out of love. He, there's no no oh, okay. attacks, no personal attacks. It's it's completely and totally you know um, 100% um, done out of love and respect. So love you that, love, I'd be happy to talk. He's a pro flat earther anyway. So yeah, and he had, by oh, okay. yeah, he's a pro flat earther. The, the, the baseball bat would be made out of foam, so. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah. All right. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, I- you, my my pleasure. Thank you too very much for inviting me. Uh, it was it was fun. And I'm going to put the links um, in this description below. Mark is going to be going, uh, leaving us and going to do his show, Strange World, which is coming on what an hour. Yeah, an hour. 
hour. Okay, I will make sure that the link is put in the description area below the show so you guys can go over there and you can give him a listen. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Are we off? And hold on a second. George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> Got to slip that in every once in a while. We're still going to be on the air for just a second. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody in the chat room for joining us tonight. Um, I want to remind everybody, we did have a show planned for um, for 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight with Jeff, Jeff Norton. Jeff did send me a message while we were on the air saying that he needs to reschedule it. That's fine. I understand he has his office tore apart, and that's just perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to grab the uh, the gang. I'm going to je grab Jeff Lehman. I'm going to grab Scott. I'm going to grab uh, Rick, uh, Robbie here. Uh, we're going to see if we can get uh, you know the gang on, see if Damien's busy. And we'll come on and we'll do a show with you guys at 10 o'clock tonight um, if everybody's available just because, you know, we're on a roll. We might as well do four shows today. So... <laughs> I want to thank everybody, the chairman. I truly want to thank Mark Sargent for joining us tonight. I want to thank everybody for being respectful. And uh, we hope that you get this information and take it and, uh, you know, do your due diligence. We don't expect you to believe anything we you heard today. You have enough information to do your own homework. And that's what we encourage. Robbie, final words. Final words. Well, I've got to say that was quite a, a, an amazing show tonight I uh, really got to thank you Mark it's been a ple pleasure to listen to you you know it's a it's a lot different li actually speaking to you live than it is actually watching your videos or listening to your discussions on on, on YouTube or whatnot so yeah um, been, it's been great and uh, I'd like to thank all the people that have been listening tonight I hope it's been edifying for you and um, anybody that's actually been listening to this for the first time about the flat earth theory and thought well what the hell is that well I hope that actually spurs you on to actually do some further research because you know Know, as I say, truth is stranger than fiction and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, so with all that being said, you can find us at ESWG Exposing Satanic World Government. You can also find us on, uh, that's on Facebook. You can also find us at the uh, Underground Resistance Network page on Facebook and also here on YouTube. And you can also find us at the Ultimate Hebrew uh, Israelite Awakening page on Facebook. And I do hope that you uh, go on those pages and uh, see what we've got in store for you. And with that, thank you very much. Okay. Good night, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye. And we are off the air. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, my pleasure. It was a... I cannot wait for my boyfriend to. Re I'm gonna. I'm gonna hunker him down this weekend. He's a truck driver, so he's not home right now. Got it. I'm gonna make sure that that he listens to the show and at least, uh, you know, maybe listen to somebody else other than myself because I. I just. I can't explain everything. You know, I just. Oh, I, got I got you. There's things that I just. You know, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. You know. I got you. Sorry, but I'm going to have to find somewhere else to live next year. <laughs> and I need that to live. That's okay. That's all right. No, I'm just kidding. So right. thank, thank you guys so much. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, I got to I gotta run. But uh, if you guys ever need me again, just let me know, okay? Will do. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.